verse 1. Ready? Yeah. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come unto you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Don't you want to be one of those? He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father in, excuse me, and before his angels. He who, everybody read this out loud with me, ready? He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit of God, how he moves in, in, in when we come together. How you're saving, delivering. Lord, you're helping the saints be stronger and encouraged. You're bringing the sinner in and seeing them saved and transformed. Not looking like us, but calling them as you designed them to be. We thank you for this privilege of sharing your word. I need your help. I cannot do anything without you, but I believe with all my heart this is a word for Freedom Center today. I believe with all my heart you've put this on my heart. I know we're doing a series, but you in perfect authority and sovereignty have allowed this day to come that we can speak this word, Lord, of preventativeness, Lord. To see, God, you continue to do without giving the devil a foothold. We thank you for this day and give you glory in Jesus' name. Can I have a good amen? Amen. If you want to take a vacation to London, I guess that would be fun. I've never been there. But there's a place called the Metropolitan uh, Tabernacle. And they give tours of the Metropolitan Tabernacle. It's a 5,000 seat auditorium. And the tour guide would tell you this. He would talk about the great Charles Spurgeon. And he would talk about when Charles Spurgeon preached on Sunday mornings that the 5,000 seat auditorium was completely full and people would sit around the walls and stand around the walls and stand outside in the foyer just to hear Charles Spurgeon preach. He would talk about the way things used to be. Today, there's just a dim shadow of what used to be. They're living in the past of looking of that great day that happened at this Metropolitan Tabernacle. This is what the Lord Jesus Christ is telling the Sardis Church. You're looking at what you have done, but there's no reality of what you are doing. A few things that I wrote down when Jesus Christ writes to the church of Sardis, this is what he's saying. They were all reputation and no reality. They were all form and no force. They were glorifying in past splendor and ignoring the present state. They focused on past reputation rather than present reality. We live in an age that everybody has this uh, old time feeling. We have burger joints made with checkerboard floors uh, just to bring back the old milkshake days when we're living in an iPod and a uh, Twitter place right now. People love the past. They build monuments there and they stay there too long. Can I declare just the end of this just in case I don't get to that? Our kids do not need to hear what God did on a map somewhere in history. He, they need to see a present reality of the power of the Holy Spirit. They need to see people healed, delivered, and set free. We do not need God to prove himself to us because we trust him by faith. But this world, who serve many gods who are not really God, are trying to find something in reality. There is only one God who answers by fire. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. He possesses the Holy Spirit power that we need. We do not need form and fashion. We need power. Revelation, the verse, first verse in chapter 3, second part says this. I, will, I know your works, that you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. In other words, they're DOA. They're dead on arrival. He says you got a name that you're alive, but you're not alive. You're dead. You're living on past reputation. Let me kind of declare to you today, your relationship with the Lord needs to be today. He, he, he made, I made him Lord of my life in 1978. He came into my life and radically changed me at an altar somewhere right here. And he, he moved in my heart. He became Lord, Master, and Savior. But I can't stay in 1978. This is 2013. But can I tell you right now, it gets sweeter as the days go by. I hear him whisper my name. I feel his presence in the darkest of hours. I've seen death in my family. I've seen sickness. We've gone through tra tragedies. We've gone through financial crisis. But my God has always been a very present help in time of trouble. And it gets better and better and better. He is alive today. Yesterday was great, but it's gone, Bubba. It's over. Live today. Don't be dead on arrival.
Bible. Why is he bringing this scripture to us to Sardis? More than any other than these seven letters that we're studying these last few weeks and a couple more weeks ahead. Listen to why. Number one reason is this. It's happened before. Over and over again it's happened. I've seen it in church history in this building. I've seen it, friends of mine in other churches. Things are going good. God's saving. People are excited. But then there's this little crack that the devil puts his little fork in. And he comes in and he, he moves on maybe the pastor says something stupid. That's my using me. You know? This is misunderstood. Or maybe a family gets hurt somehow or another. And it grows and it grows. I'm begging of you. Thank God the unity we have. Thank God for the power we have. We need to protect what we have. Yeah. Men, wives, husbands, wives, it looks great. Protect it though. Don't take each other for granted. Children, when you're raising them, when they get grown and they're saved and they're serving God, don't quit praying for them. You should be praying for them more when they're serving God than before they started serving God because then the devil's against them 100% trying to kill, steal, and destroy from him. We need to understand it's happened before. We need to protect it. When we see growth, thank God for the unity. Thank God for the fire. But protect it. Don't, be, don't let the enemy come in in any way, shape, or form. The Word of God says when the enemy comes in, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. When we pray and see God's face, let the Lord lift up a standard against him like a flood. We know what floods look like these days, don't we? Amen. So we need that. The second thing is this that we have to protect. It could happen again. Here we are right now in God's blessings. I, I, I was looking around. I, uh, our superintendent from a, 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 the South Carolina district came. Victor Smith and Nell Smith came yesterday. Uh, Elva and Dwayne Martin, they, they built the, our North Campus uh, under another church name, and then we went to help with it and come alongside them, and now it's our North Campus. They had their 50th anniversary, and they celebrated at North Campus, and then Victor Smith wanted to see our building down here, and the, the, he was talking about our food bank and soup kitchen, and, and I just started hitting me, what you guys have done? That's why I want to give you a state of report this morning of what God's doing through what you do. Touching on then that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. I hear reports everywhere. I have people leading people to the Lord at work and at school. Camp has been, uh, Brad's going to give us a report next Sunday of how many of our kids got saved. Some of the kids are going to testify of what God is doing all around. Don't, don't, don't not protect this. Be careful because it can happen again. This is what happens. So spirit-filled men and women get together. Maybe in a building like this and God starts moving. God starts touching. They start doing things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. People start getting saved. Marriages start getting restored. Then it becomes like a machine. It's just sort of put on autopilot. And you get up at 6 in the morning and you read your Bible because you're supposed to. And you pray because you're supposed to. And you come to church on Sundays you're supposed to. And you fellowship a little bit because you're supposed to. And it becomes autopilot. And then after that it becomes a monument. And you build this monument and you talk about the good old days. Listen, I appreciate the good old days, but they're like my $5 I had yesterday in my billfold. It's gone. And it ain't coming back. The good old days are not coming back. We have to have a present reality with the power. If we don't, it can happen again. The greatness of Freedom Center, not a building, a group of people, is not just a past reputation. It is a present reality. Just for you history buffs, this uh, letter is a, a bringing back to us or represents the uh, the age between 1500 and 1700 AD. Sardis, the church we're talking about, means remnant. There was a remnant of people who escaped Thyatira, uh, the Catholic uh, era. If you remember, Martin Luther nailed his 96 thesis on the door of the Catholic Church, saying that we can read the Word of God ourselves. We can we, we don't have to confess to a man, but we can go to the Lord Jesus Christ on our own. And so they escaped that. Just a remnant did. But the problem is now they find themselves going back to that and remembering the good old days. And Jesus is telling them through John, he says, you had the reputation of being alive, but you're dead. I almost wanted to ask you to go fill each other's pulse. See what's going on. I forgot to mention this in the early service. Uh, uh, Jerry Alberson is getting the uh, Usher and Safety Team Award for Freedom Center. This is, I just chased a squirrel. I'm ADD. I can do that. Wednesday night, we had a lady with a little girl in the front seat driving. Everybody's getting out of church on Wednesday night. The, the whole front's full of people, parking lot's full of people. And then I hear somebody yelling, call 911, call 911. Jerry Alberson 
a lady's driving down the street here and has a sh uh, seizure. And a little girl in the front seat starts yelling out and crying out. Jerry, Al Jerry Alberson, one of our ushers, runs and catches up with the car, opens up the door and jumps in the car and puts on brakes. I said, you got the Usher of the Year Award. <laughs> now he turns red and gets embarrassed like that. But I was saying about the pulse. That's the second seizure we've had right here on our front porch. Ah, what a better place to have people pray for. Amen? Amen. But we need to understand we need to have a pulse again. We need, what is the heartbeat of our church? God told us 10 years ago, if we would go for people nobody else wanted, He would send us people everybody wanted. This is what we found out. The people nobody wants, when you get them saved and they, they fall in love with Jesus, they grow up to be the people everybody wants because they'll give you their life. They'll give you their life. They'll serve God like a heart of So it's exciting. We need to understand it. We cannot let it happen again.